Dude. Dude. Dude, I almost went for it and then you said you weren't ready. How to test your software idea. Look, I get calls all the time from people that's like, this is my first time and I want to get it right. Or I don't know anybody in the tech space or um, I want to make sure I don't waste my money. Um, I think I get it. There's, those fears are right, okay? Those are challenges that are absolutely correct. But what I want to share with you in this framework is really the quickest way to test, and my promise is no cost. Can you imagine that? At no cost, and you're talking software, I'm saying no cost. And with the highest probability of succeeding. Now, the first thing you need to understand is that the probabilities are low and it's okay. I think there's different levels of failure. And um, you know, I think that it's okay if you don't figure it out right away, but you keep swinging, right? You only fail once you get out of the game. It doesn't matter what inning you're in, as long as you keep getting up, bat and swing, you're gonna win. I learned this in a big way in my company, Flowtown. We went through a ton of different iterations but we got to a point where we built the wrong product, brought it to market. It was a landing page app of all things. It was called Landing Pay Guess. It was like dot .es with a G before it. Long story, not getting into it. But the next iteration changed everything. We decided to focus on a core feature and we went, we tested it in the market and we found customers to pre-buy, get involved, and that eventually helped prove and fund the further development to get our customers to a point where we got raw and profitable. Now, I'm gonna share with you guys some key areas and aspects that I kind of extracted from that process and I've used for my next company, Clarity, and literally at this point, almost thousands and thousands of startups I've helped advise to build products. The first thing is to start off assuming you're wrong. I think most founders have a hard time doing that because it seems schizophrenic. At one sense, I need to feel like, I call it exclamation mark. I'm gonna take over the world and this is gonna work and this is amazing, because they almost need that in internal like motivation and energy to do something. But at the same time, you gotta be humble and honest with yourself and say, you know what, there's probably some aspect of this strategy and the ideas that I've put forth that are probably gonna be wrong. And I think if you start at that level, it's just a way easier conversation to move in to the following steps I'm gonna share. The second thing is to list all of your assumptions. I think when you build a business, there's un uh, expressed. You didn't express them, but there's assumptions you're making that if those things are wrong, it could be around marketing. You know, how do I get in front of the customers? It could be about getting customers. Who is this right for? It could be around the tech, the technology, the APIs, how you're actually going to build it. Or it could even be around the cost. I think it'll cost X to build or uh, I could sell it for whatever Y price. And those are huge assumptions. So step one is make the list. Everything you can possibly think about your idea and how you think it's gonna be in five years, make that list of assumptions and start thinking about those different categories. The next step, uh, which is the third step, um, well, one sec, we are at um, assume you're wrong, list all assumptions, uh, look at the different categories, sorry, that's step three. Four is to prioritize, okay? I do prioritize like this because I don't know if you've ever seen like the sort button in the, the, the toolbar, you know, in like Word or whatever. It's like these two arrows, one down, one up. So sort the right order of the assumptions, starting with the riskiest assumption. That's the framework name, which is what is the riskiest assumption that if I prove to be wrong, the whole business doesn't work, right? For example, if I'm Uber and my idea is that people are going to use an app to request a car, and I test, will anybody use their mobile phone to hail a cab um, and nobody does that part, the rest of the business doesn't work. So there's like fundamental changes in human behavior that you're assuming that people are gonna do that they may never do that would cause the whole thing to be wrong. Um, one of my favorite stories around this was one time I was asked to sit down with these, these kids, these entrepreneurs um, from middle school and they had a ton of different ideas but one of the entrepreneur Real groups, these kids, had an idea to build um, what I call an energy park. Essentially, it's a park for kids that as the kids play on the park, right? Um, I don't even know how it would work other than the swing, but like swing on the swing or do the teeter-totter or whatever other mechanical type of toys they could put together, spinning things that make noise. They would capture the energy from the kids playing and it would get fed back into the grid. Now, there's a lot of assumptions there, especially living, I mean, just starting off with the climate. I live in Canada where it's freezing and cold. So 
Could you even manufacture the gear in a way that would work for uh, seasonality, right? So that's, there's, there's a ton of assumption. The other assumption is, could you generate enough electricity with the median range of usage of a park to actually have some kind of meaningful impact back to the grid? Um, could you produce the gear in a way that would be ROI positive from an upfront cost versus energy production? And could you create the toys or the park elements in a way that would be interesting to a two and three and four, five, whatever year old kid? Those were the assumptions. And when I asked them to rank them, oh, and, and could you sell it to the government, which if you've ever sold to government or K-12, those are very tough markets. Possible, I have a lot of friends have done it. I've coached some entrepreneurs on making that um, attack plan, but uh, tough. If uh, you didn't make the list of assumptions and start thinking about validating it, then you're gonna have a hard time. And that is the fifth step in the whole process, which is validation. There's two ways that I'm gonna share with you. These, this is the absolutely fastest way to validate an idea. One is to reach out to an expert, right? So for example, I'm sitting there with these kids and I say, have you reached out to an engineer that builds parks, that designs parks for you know, municipalities or neighborhoods or whatever? Have you talked to anybody that designs parks? They say no. Okay, that's interesting. Because I'm sure if you reached out to them, they would have some ideas around cost, product, materials, um, regulations, requirements for maintenance and um, other aspects of a park design. And, and to me, experts that are in the field are the fastest way to start validating some of your riskiest assumptions. The second one is to run experiments. And running experiments is saying, okay, it's, it's with no code, it's saying, this is what I think people are gonna do. How do I simulate that behavior and see if out of 100 people that I put that in front of, they take action and do the right behavior or directionally speaking enough people do it. But the key is to define the parameters and the expected outcomes before you run the experiment, which is a hypothesis. So experts, experiments, that is the fifth step in really truly testing your idea. So starting off, you need to make sure you start with the assumption that you're wrong. And then I'm gonna share with you guys a big myth uh, and something you have to stop doing. Uh, the second thing is list all of your assumptions uh, that you might have. Try to group them into categories. Number three, the categories are marketing, uh, customers, the technology, the cost of things. So just start thinking about that. Then prioritize them like this uh, to make sure that they're put in the right order. And then finally, validate using one of two strategies. One is the experts, the second is to run experiments. And the thing, the tip that I need you guys to do is get out of the building. Too many people hide behind email, blog comments, uh, Quora threads, uh, Twitter discussions. The true validation happens H to H, human to human interactions, conversations in person. Yes, you can schedule a meeting over the phone, but get in the car, drive there, ask your parents to drive you if you're one of those kids uh, building. And I thought it was fascinating. I didn't want to, you know, poo poo their idea, but I mean, take a few steps to really get to the crux of the business model. So, with that, I want to challenge you to live a bigger life and a bigger business, and I'll see you next Monday. If you're still watching, it means you kind of enjoyed the video. So if so, subscribe to my channel, but more importantly, join my newsletter where I share other exclusive videos and training and events uh, that I invite people to in contests. Oh yeah. Uh, and if you're ready to keep going, I've got two other videos ready for you right there. See you next week.